there, this is Haley with Bygone Blooms and I wanted to talk a little bit today about um, different things that you can plant in your landscape if you're interested in cutting. So the focus of today's video will be perennials and things that come back year after year that maybe a home gardener might want to put in their landscape or uh, maybe an aspiring flower farmer that has room in a flower bed. Um, these are things that look nice along with your house and your landscaping, like I said, but also that last a while in a vase. So I'll talk about my experiences and I have things broken up into three categories. So I have um, bulbs, I have perennials, and then I have bushes or shrubs. So don't mind me as I refer back to my notes. The first section that I uh, have listed here is bulbs. And the bulb that I like the most is daffodils. And um, you might be familiar with daffodils that here they grow wild even in the woods and along the side of the road. Um, but they are not all um, created the same. Daffodils now come in all sorts of different colors and sizes and there's some that have multiple small blooms per head. Some of them have really large blooms. So I would encourage you to check out daffodils. They last a long time in a vase. You can get at least a week from them. And they also naturalize. So if they can make it through your winters, here we're a zone six and they do just fine for us. So if they can make it through your winters, they will spread and uh, make themselves at home in your garden. You'll have them for years to come. So that is one thing that I really like about daffodils. It is important to note that they're toxic. So I wouldn't let any like cats or dogs or small children or anyone um, eat them. But as long as you're not eating them, they're fine. Other things you can grow that come in the form of bulbs are tulips, gladiolas are really good, um, and lilies if you want something that blooms in the summer. <clears throat> tulips and daffodils um, and alliums will bloom more toward the spring. Um, and that's another thing I like about daffodils is they're one of the first things that comes into color in the spring when we're ready for um, some color after the winter. But uh, like I said, gladiolas and lilies are also a good option and can be a really profitable cutting flower if you're interested that looks really nice in the landscape as well. The next category of flowers that I have listed are just regular perennials. So these aren't bulbs, you could get them bare root, you could start them from seed. A lot of these things I started from seed. Um, one of the things I really like is cone flowers. You'll notice in the picture, it's the bright pink uh, flower kind of in the center of the bouquet that I have showing next to me. Um, I also really like Rudbeckia or also known as Black Eyed Susans. I've got an example in one of my bouquets of those as well. And those are another that come in different colors. So they're not just yellow. They've got a, a like burgundy color one. They have different, different options for you. Um, but they look really nice in your landscape too. Um, I also really like yarrow. Uh, some colors I really like are pink, orange. They have a white one that's nice. Um, they've got more like purpley tones. And um, I also really like sedum. So sedum is in the succulent family, um, kind of almost leans toward like a cactus or something that you could have, um, like I said, as like a succulent or something inside your house. Um, but sedum, uh, some kinds are tall and they um, also will make it through the winter. So I really like sedum. It will last weeks in a vase. Um, I have had bouquets that I just keep adding flowers and I leave the sedum in um, so long that my sedum has taken root in water. So um, it is something that lasts incredibly long in the vase. I've used it in wedding work and it's worked really nice. Um, when it's about to bloom, it has little seed um, head looking flower heads on it um, that are kind of a cream color. For the variety that I have, it blooms pink, um, but before it blooms, it looks really nice. Um, so like I said, I've used it for a, a bridal bouquet before and it stayed um, really nice in the bouquet. Um, there's different colors that of the bloom. Um, I've used it both when it's in bloom and when it's not. It also looks really nice dried uh, with the little bloom heads. So I like to leave them in my garden for forage for animals, but also I use them in dried bouquets and um, wreaths and things like that too. Another thing that I really like for greenery is bee balm, and I've used that with blooms and without blooms. That's another thing that I've started from seed. Um, and the bees really like that one. So that's something that um, just is 
nice if you have kind of a cottage garden style, something that is less formal. I really like the look of bee balm and the blooms. Uh, I also have some milkweed and that's another thing that the bees and the butterflies like. It's a host for monarch butterflies. The caterpillars eat milkweed. Um, so that brings um, really cool butterflies to your garden. And um, that one produces kind of a sap, but if you cut it at the right time, it's not really an issue. And I, um, I find that some people can have allergic reactions to the sap, but if you're not allergic to it, it's not a big problem. I just try not to get it on my skin. So if you wear gloves, then you'd be totally fine. Um, you can also cut salvia. That is a common flower. You can find it at your big box store on the dollar rack a lot of times in the summer. Um, if it gets a little bit scorched, they throw it on the, the sale rack. Um, and salvia lasts fairly long in the vase and it also is really good for drying and pressing as well. So one of the things that I would encourage you for these perennials, especially if you're adding to your flower bed or you're establishing a new flower bed or thinking about wanting to add some things you might wanna cut, is uh, a lot of these things, like I mentioned before, can be grown from seed. So I have grown coneflowers, I've grown rudbeckia, I've grown yarrow, uh, bee balm, and salvia, all from seed. Um, and there's different types. You need to make sure that when you're choosing seeds, some of them, some of these will be listed as cool flowers, maybe in other sources that you look at, and they can be grown as annuals. Um, but if you look carefully on the packaging, you could also find them that will be perennial in your area and they'll overwinter. So that's something that you could have in your flower bed for years to come. And then you could also cut on it if you want to make a bouquet for a friend or family member or Mother's Day or whatever. Um, those are things that, like I said, you can grow from seed and you can establish a flower bed that way. So when my husband and I moved into our house, I just knew that we wouldn't have a huge budget for our flower bed, but I also knew I wanted to grow some things that I could cut and sell. So what I did was I started seed trays of yarrow and of um, salvia and of cone flowers, and those have lasted me. Now they're going on their third year, and I can tell it's early March. They're already starting to green up because of our mild winter and I'm just so excited for them to be in their full glory. It does take some time if you're starting from seed. The first year not a ton happens but you should get a few blooms even on your first year um, if you start them early enough inside um, in the early spring. Plant them out before your last frost but by year two and three you'll definitely have blooms and that's something that for a five dollar seed packet you could fill your flower bed with yarrow for example that for me is a native flower to northwest arkansas and um, so it's good for beneficial insects and for natives uh, insects and um, animals in my area but it also is something that um, i filled my flower bed with it it's good for cutting and it was so cheap to just use seeds um, so those there are options out there if you're trying to be economical in planning your garden beds the last category on my list is bushes, and I've kind of included um, many different things in here. Um, the first thing on my list for bushes is peonies, or peonies, however you pronounce them. I'm from the South, so we call them peonies. Um, the reason I have these as my number one is not because they're my favorite in the landscape, but as far as profitable blooms, uh, peonies are it. Um, if you are planning something that you want to sell to a florist or use for wedding work or things like that, or even just have a beautiful display um, in your yard or in a bouquet that you're making, peonies, uh, the blooms are very large. Um, they're highly sought after. They're only uh, in season for a short time. They're so gorgeous, but um, you can easily sell them uh, for four plus dollars a stem um, so or, or a bloom. Um, so that's something that I like to buy bare root. The roots come to me, they don't look like much. And again, like with seed starting the first year, you don't see a lot. You see a little sprout come up maybe. You make sure that you have them watered even in the fall when nothing's happening. Uh, but then years two and especially year three, um, that's when the real show happens. And that's the kind of thing that if you're investing in your landscaping, it can be a dual purpose. It's beautiful in your landscape. It blooms early spring in, the, in May, usually in our area. Um, and then when you're, uh, if you're looking to sell them, you have that early spring um, bloom or it would just be beautiful next to your house too. And these are the kind of things, um, there are peony bushes that have lasted for over a hundred years. Um, so it's well worth waiting a couple years for it to get established. And bare roots are only 
maybe four or five dollars a, a, a bare root typically versus if you buy them uh, potted up um, which at your um, whatever plant store you're going to or greenhouse or garden center um, they're just taking bare roots and putting them in dirt and they um, charge easily twenty dollars for something you could get for five or less if you especially if you buy them in bulk so that's something to look into another thing that works really well um, the greenery is really beautiful. The um, blooms are really beautiful is smoke bush. Um, their blooms almost look like smoke. That's why they're called smoke bush. So that's something that you can use for um, cut off a piece for really small wedding work like boutonnieres or something. It's something that makes a statement in a large arrangement. Um, they dry nicely. So that's a, a great option. And I have a, a purple smoke bush. They also have some that are almost like lime green that are really beautiful. Uh, for Scythia is really nice for greenery. The greenery lasts a long time in the vase. Um, and it's also beautiful. It's one of the first things to come out. Um, so even if you drive along the side of the road here in Northwest Arkansas, we just finished February and there's already yellow for Scythia. Um, it's special because the blooms come out before the leaves. So um, you could force it inside or use it in an arrangement with the blooms only on the sticks um, that are left over in the winter. And then when it comes out in leaf, uh, you could use that for greenery and it lasts a long time. You could also use red twig dogwood. That would be something that is uh, provides winter interest for your garden. You could use it for winter arrangements. Uh, and then also you can use the leaves in bouquets as well. Um, nine bark is similar that you can use the leaves for greenery um, or you could use the sticks or anything like that. Now, of course, there are a ton of options and um, I hope that this video is an encouragement to you that if you're starting out flower farming or if you are just a home gardener who wants to grow some things year after year that you can use for arrangements or for cutting, um, even on a small scale, that there are perennials and bushes and bulbs that will come back for you um, that you can plant one time, whether from seed or bare root or you buy the bulbs in bulk or whatever that looks like for you, and you can have something to cut from for years to come. Thanks for growing along with me and I'll see you in the next one.